Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the thoracic duct. So, what is thoracic duct? Thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel in our body. Okay, so thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel in the body. Okay. What is its extension? It extends from the upper part of the cisterna chile or the confluence of confluence of lymphatic ducts at the level of the lumbar one vertebra or, or t12 lower part of the t12 thoracic vertebra it extends from that level to the root of the neck so extend from lumbar one vertebra it extends from from lumbar one vertebra l1 vertebra to the root of the neck okay so it is a content of the abdomen, content of the posterior mediastinum, content of the superior mediastinum, content of the root of the neck. So you can call it, it is a content of the abdomen. In the abdomen, it is only small part in the abdomen okay it is mostly in the thorax but it begins from the it begins just below the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm so it is still a content of the abdomen posterior mediastinum superior mediastinum root of the neck okay and root of the neck it is about 45 cm in length what is the length of thoracic duct is about 45 centimeter in length it is about 45 centimeter in length in an adult individual okay so you got that around 45 centimeter in length so we have some other structure also around 45 centimeter in length like our sartorius muscle our spinal cord and vas deferens or ductus deferens so its appearance it has beaded appearance it has beaded appearance okay and it is not a homogeneous straight duct the lumen is variable sometimes it may duplicate okay it may duplicate okay then it unite again okay then it may unite again so that may happen and also its diameter 
may be a little bit variable from location to location, but it has beaded appearance uh, like that, beaded appearance due to the presence of valves. So these are beaded appearance, beaded due to valves. Okay, a valve that is that is actually the the tunica intima extension and there will be some soiling of the, of the content here due to the collection of content there will be some soiling that's why it is it is beaded appearance okay so it is it is not a homogeneous cylinder its diameter is variable it may be splitted it may be divided again it may be unite and also it had it has beaded appearance due to presence of valves, many valves. The number of valves also variable. The location of valve is usually in the place where the other ducts join to the thoracic duct and where there is sight of, of compression or pressure. Okay, that is that. So we got that. The beaded appearance, 45 centimeter in length and the thoracic duct begins as a continuation begins as a continuation continuation of what of the confluence of lymphatic ducts of the confluence of lymphatic ducts okay or from the secular secular cisterna kylie kylie okay so it is continued and this is the secular form of cisterna kylie if you go to the anatomy department in the dissection hall this is not very frequent finding you may not get the cisterna kylie like this a cistern of kyle that does not happen in most cases only present in around 13 to 20 percent cases you'll get a confluence mostly it is a confluence maybe like that confluence okay so you may get, get some confluence of the other ducts that is the appearance here okay so it is simply a confluence of multiple ducts like that of the lumbar duct intestinal duct intestinal lymphatic duct lumbar lymphatic duct okay so, or the descending thoracic lymphatic duct or it may be secular we may get a system of Kylie around 13 to 20 percent cases. Okay, so begins as a continuation of the confluence of lymphatic ducts or from the secular, like a sac cisterna Kylie. Okay, now it what is its course? Okay, and it enters the thorax, enters the thorax through the through the aortic opening of the diaphragm aortic opening is same as aortic hiatus okay aortic opening of the diaphragm and we know that the vertebral level of aortic opening of the diaphragm is t12 okay then it ascend it ascends through the posterior mediastinum, ascends through the posterior mediastinum, mediastinum, it is almost in the midline, the median plane, on the, on the left side will get the on the right side will get the 
the azygous vein and on the left side we get the esophagus okay so we get also the descending thoracic aorta okay on the left side so ascend through the posterior mediastinum okay and the then it goes to the posterior mediastinum so this is the thoracic duct is here this is the thoracic duct thoracic duct and this is our cisterna chile or we, it is just a confluence of lymphatic ducts cisterna chile okay maybe the confluence of lymphatic duct lymphatic ducts okay so it enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm suppose this is the aortic opening of the diaphragm okay it ascends to the posterior mediastinum okay at the level of at the, at the level of t5 at the level of t5 it goes towards the from the from the median plane go towards the we can make it like that way okay so if we go through that then it goes from the median plane to the left okay left okay it may go there we have ball here we have the beaded appearance okay so the level of t5 it goes from the median plane to the left in essence to the superior mediastinum reaches the root of the neck okay it it crosses to the left side and ascends through the through the superior mediastinum superior mediastinum reaches the root of the neck here the root of the neck of the neck and then what happens it turns laterally okay and it opens into the left venous angle okay turn laterally towards the left side it turns laterally okay and opens into the junction between the left subclavian vein vein and left internal jugular vein okay we got that so this is our left subclavian vein subclavian vein this is our left internal jugular vein left internal jugular vein left internal jugular vein and this area is called this area junction between the left subclavian vein and that internal jugular vein this area is called left venous angle this is the left venous angle and this is the left venous angle where the thoracic duct opens so the thoracic duct content will be dumped will be will open into the venous blood of at the junction between the left internal jugular vein left subclavian vein okay so that forms the brachiocephalic vein this is the left brachiocephalic vein this is a junction there from left brachiocephalic vein here is a site of opening of the thoracic duct okay 
So thoracic duct, we got it starts from the cisterna chyle, enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm, content of posterior mediastinum, content of superior mediastinum, and certainly it is a content of the aortic opening of the diaphragm, content of root of the neck, and ultimately it opens the junction between the left interventricular vein, left subclavian vein. Okay, and this angle is called left venous angle. We got the, the course of the thoracic duct. Relationships. Okay, so what are the relationships? Relationships to other structures. Okay, what are the relationships? Okay, in the aortic opening, what is present anteriorly? The diaphragm the median arcuate ligament posteriorly will get the vertebral column okay the right side will get the agicos vein the left side will get the aorta in the posterior mediastinum what structure anteriorly will get the diaphragm again okay the lower part okay posteriorly vertebral column on the right side the Agigous vein on the left side will get the aorta. What aorta? The descending thoracic aorta. Okay, we got the relationship in the posterior mediastinum. The superior mediastinum will get what are what is the relationship anteriorly? Arch of the aorta. So it is behind the arch of the aorta, left subclavian artery. Posteriorly, certainly the vertebral column on the right side will get the esophagus. So, if this is the agigous vein, the, on the right side, we'll get the esophagus. To the left side, we'll get the pleura. What pleura? The left pleura, the, the especially the cervical pleura. In the neck region, what happened? It is around 3 to 4 centimeter above the, above the clavicle. Okay. So, it is about 3 to 4 centimeter above the Clavicle. Okay, so what are the relationship in the neck? Okay, anteriorly it is anterior to the anterior anterior to the vertebral artery, vertebral vein, vertebral artery and vein and vein. Then thyrocervical trunk, thyrocervical, thyrocervical trunk, sympathetic trunk, cervical sympathetic trunk, cervical sympathetic trunk. Okay, and what? And it is anterior to the scalene anterior muscle and scalene anterior muscle so thoracic duct is anterior to the you can say thoracic duct duct is anterior to the vertebral artery vertebral vein thyrocervical trunk there is a branch of subclavian artery sympathetic chain of ganglion okay there is the sympathetic trunk this part, this is the cervical sympathetic trunk. You can add as cervical sympathetic trunk. Okay, scalene muscle. What is that muscle? Scalene anterior muscle. Okay. Also, it is in front of the left phrenic nerve and left phrenic nerve. You know that phrenic nerve, root value C3, C4, C5. Okay, we got that. The relationship. Here it, it is behind, okay, it is anterior to these structures. So these structures are behind the thoracic duct. Okay, we got that the relationship. Okay, so what structure is related to the thoracic duct to the right in the posterior mediastinum? Okay, our answer should be the the Age I was then. 
one structure is to the left of the thoracic duct in the posterior mediastinum. <coughs> there is the left side. In the left side, we get the descending thoracic aorta anteriorly in the posterior mediastinum, part of the diaphragm, and certainly will get the esophagus. Okay, and also it is related to the right pleural recess. Okay. Posteriorly, certainly the vertebral column. Okay, we got the relationship of the thoracic duct. Okay, so you have to remember that thoracic duct is present between the esophagus and the aegyphus vein. It is also longitudinal, like the other two structures, like the aegyphus vein and the esophagus. Okay, we got that. So we got the formation, we got it is in the posterior mediastinum, very small part in the abdomen, it turns on the T5 level. Suppose this is the T5, go there, and it is turning around there, opening to the left venous angle. This angle is called left venous angle, left venous angle. Why it is called left venous angle? It is junction between two veins. This is the internal jugular vein, left subclavian vein. Okay. Now, what are the tributaries of the thoracic duct? Tributaries. Tributaries of thoracic duct. We have multiple tributaries. We have the in we have the descending thoracic. We have the descending thoracic lymphatic duct. Descending thoracic lymphatic duct, lymphatic ducts. These are the descending thoracic lymphatic duct, descending thoracic lymphatic duct. lymphatic duct okay one is this another one is this this is our thoracic duct okay we got that we have also intercostal ducts multiple intercostal ducts okay intercostal lymphatic ducts lymphatic ducts we have mediastinal mediastinal lymphatic ducts lymphatic ducts okay so here close to its opening into the left venous angle we have the the jugular lymphatic duct jugular lymphatic duct we have the subclavian lymphatic duct, subclavian lymphatic ducts, and we have the bronchomediastinal lymphatic duct. This is the bronchomediastinal, media stinal, stinal lymphatic duct okay this is the what this is the subclavian lymphatic lymphatic duct this is what is the jugular lymphatic duct okay we got that so multiple tributaries we have intercostal tributaries that drain lymph from the intercostal space. If you remember this, that this jugular lymphatic duct, subclavian lymphatic duct, and, and the bronchomedicinal lymphatic duct, okay, may not open into the thoracic duct. It they may open independently in any of these veins. Okay, not necessarily always they should go to the thoracic duct. Okay, sometimes with the right lymphatic duct, okay, 
that may communicate with that of the thoracic duct that is also possible so you got the tributaries of the of the thoracic duct okay now we go through through the embryology 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 okay this is a blood vessel so it should develop from the mesoderm mesodermal development okay we have multiple channels of vessel is formed multiple channels okay they are intercommunicated to each other okay then most of the channel will be confined to the to the thoracic duct okay right side will get only only less channels most of the channel will go to the thoracic duct okay embryological this is mesodermal and we may have connection to the right lymphatic duct to the thoracic duct okay we discuss the initial part the thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel of our body so why you call it largest because if this is a person here okay if this is the person here okay this is his leg okay you can make this okay so okay okay you got that so upper limb lower limb this one fourth area this part if you just think about diaphragm everything below the diaphragm should go through the thoracic duct the left thoracic wall left side of the head and neck left upper limb will go to the thoracic duct so thoracic duct carries 75 percent of total lymph of our body okay so so thoracic duct it pick up 75 percent of lymph of our body how about this one fourth area head and neck and right lung and the right side of the chest wall this will go through the right lymphatic duct so 25 percent right lymphatic duct and our thoracic duct will pick up around 75 percent okay so only this part right lymphatic duct other part by the thoracic duct that's why we call it the largest lymphatic vessel we got the embryology it is mesodermal in development we have multiple channel they are connected to each other then most of the channel go towards the formation of the thoracic duct okay then we'll go to the histology of the structure if you have a section of the thoracic duct anywhere we'll get this like that way very big lumen lumen is very big almost equivalent to a medium sized vein it is again tunica adventitia tunica adventitia tunica media like other blood vessel and tunica intima intima there's a lining epithelium or tunica intima of the thoracic duct like other blood vessel it is lined by endothelium and there's the lymphatic and 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 there is no elastic fiber in the tunica intima we'll get in tunica adventitia they have some elastic fiber and fibrous tissue tunica media tunica adventitia, adventitia contains some smooth muscle smooth muscle is present in tunica media maybe also in tunica adventitia a few muscle fibers the smooth muscle fiber most in the tunica media and this lumen is large lined by simple squamous epithelium that is the endothelium okay we got the histology we get some muscle here muscle here okay we get some muscle 
and it is actually poor in elastic fibers. Okay, you got the histology. Now we we'll go to the clinical significance of thoracic duct. Well, it carries 75% of our total length. Okay, so that is very important. Clinical significance. We can say clinical anatomy. Okay. The thoracic duct is very much thin wall. Blood vessel like structure, it has some smooth muscle but still very thin and its color is dull white. It is thin and dull white in color. So it may be damaged, especially in the surgery of the posterior mediastinum, specifically the esophageal surgery. It may be damaged, it may be damaged in the, okay, thin, it may be damaged in the surgical procedure. Even diagnostic procedure through the mediastinum or going to the aortic hiatus, it may damage the damage the thoracic duct so in surgical procedure of the posterior mediastinum or diagnos diagnostic procedure of the posterior mediastinum may rupture rupture the thoracic duct is very important thoracic duct leading to and, and causes this rupture causes chylothorax chylothorax we get milky fluid in the pleural cavity we may get also milky fluid in the abdomen we call it chyloperitoneum we call it chyloperitoneum peritoneum if we have damage of the thoracic duct especially in any procedure through the esophagia through the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm so there may be chance of getting chyloperitoneum if you have any surgery in the posterior mediastinum specifically the esophageal surgery we may have chylothorax we we'll get milky fluid it is very important the chylothorax okay chylothorax okay so it is important because we may lose around 75 ml to 200 ml of chyl chyl per hour okay loss of and the chyl is rich in protein fat it is rich in lymphocyte that may cause severe problems so if it is not treated there may be 50 percent chance of death even if it is done it, if it is repaired by surgery or something is it is tied out then the fatality is around 10 percent so it is important because there may be chance of damage to the thoracic duct in case of posterior mediastinal procedure okay and that's all about the thoracic ducts its length its course its relationship and its tributaries embryology histology and clinical importance specifically the chylothorax so if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me if you have any question please feel free to ask me Please share the information with your friends. Have a nice day. Bye now.